All the measures that were introduced during the pandemic were for the good of your health, and none of them will be used to exploit you financially in the future. Phew. Ah! Hello there, you 5.6 billion awakening wonders. Thank you for joining us today on our channel, where together we investigate truth. When I say together, your comments below help us formulate, create, and understand these stories. We're learning continually because of you. That's why it's important you subscribe, comment below, give us a thumbs up if you indeed enjoy the content, and stay awake so that you can continue to discern truth from fiction, so that you can continue to see how media, big business, and state power collaborate to create, manipulate, and control your reality. For a long time, you've suspected that something was wrong, and you were right. Now we are able to illustrate clearly with evidence exactly what it is. And people will call you a conspiracy theorist, and they'll call me a conspiracy theorist, but we don't care. Actually, I don't like it. No, I don't mind. I like it. I don't care. Let's see the latest story. First, you might think, oh, this isn't a big story. You'll know because you're clever. But some people think, oh, this is no big deal. MasterCard are introducing a controversial biometric payment system that requires a face scan. So, yeah, at first, oh, this is convenient. Oh, it's so convenient. I can just use the old face to pay for things. I've always called this my money maker. From money maker to money taker. It's an interesting story, though, of course, because a lot of you, and I read your comments, so I know this, believe that we're moving towards centralized currency, so it will be easier for power to manipulate, control, switch off your money. We've seen that kind of thing happen already in Canada, and a lot of people think that the pandemic created conditions where regulations could be introduced that will advance the agenda of the powerful. But let's just have a look at the news story in its neat mainstream media form before we distill it further together. How convenient would be to pay at the cash register by simply showing your face or scanning a fingerprint? Yeah, it's so hard, isn't it, when you have to sort of go like this. It's exhausting. If I have to go like... That. I mean, just do it. Oh, that's twice I've done it now. Oh, I've overdone it. Well, this is now a reality in Sao Paulo, Brazil. MasterCard has launched a pilot program at five grocery stores in the South American city where customers can authenticate their identity using their biometric information. To pay at the checkout, customers simply look at the terminal, which scans their face using facial recognition software. And if you want to give people a tip, you just place your genitals on the counter and allow someone there to slam their fist down onto your genitals and say, well done, you're an obedient little little prisoner of the system. Well done. Have a penny. Have a penny. Have a penny. Take a penny. Pin, no tap and go, just a smile or a wave of the hand. A wave of the hand. What? This is Victorian England. <laughs> bye bye freedom. Bye bye right to choose. Bye bye possibility of creating autonomous communities trading independently. Bye. AJ Bala is president of cyber and intelligence at MasterCard. It's a uh, cool new technology. Cool, baby. This is what this is. It's so cool not to be free. And hippity hop, I'm looking at me, and hippity do, do as I say. It's not cool, is it? To do all these things. Look, technology and ingenuity are very exciting. I recognize that I'm talking to you now, probably on your phone, possibly on a laptop. Maybe you're an extraterrestrial discovering this a thousand years from now, thinking, what happened to humankind? Well, I'll tell you, extraterrestrial, we didn't stay awake and we let systems centralize currency. We gave away all of our freedom. We bickered about cultural stuff like bloody idiots when we could have awoken and bonded together and gone deep within ourselves and created new systems. If only we trusted, yeah, get ready, me, the guy in the hat. With a smile, their face, or just wave. Uh, so you can forget the clunkiness of taking your wallet out or your devices out or cards out. Oh, I'm so exhausted. Oh, clunk. Oh, clunk, clunk. All my money. Oh, when it comes to the old clunky old phone clunking about. Not like my face. I don't have to carry that. It's already on my head. Oh, it's all so convenient. Oh, I'm carrying my freedom around everywhere. Why bother looking at a sunset? Oh, clunk, clunk. Why bother kissing my loved ones? Clunk, clunk, clunk. Why don't we just take a single cell out of my body and just observe that in a lab for all eternity? Just floating listlessly for an endless miasma. Clunky, clunky, clunky old life. But not everyone agrees we should share our biometric data. Amos To is a senior researcher with Human Rights Watch. So the uniqueness of our biometric identifiers presents unique harms. If they are being stolen, 
uh, as part of a data breach or if they are compromised in any other way, it's very difficult um, to recover that biometric identifier and to safely protect it again. If you lose your bank card, only odd how many times you have to ring up a call centre and they send you their pin number separately, you have to go to the cash machine and argue with that bloody little bastard thing. <laughs> Take now, Mr. House, give you a slip, send you out, right, meet you at the park after midnight, put a hat on, wear a red rose in your lapel. Imagine when it's like your biometric data that's being stolen by the government. How many times do you need to be told like oh things is going to be convenient for you and then down the line you realize, hold on a minute you just like nicking my freedom again like how many times does dear charlie brooker have to make some dystopian vision of a hellish future before we start going hold on a minute are they actually doing this right now the pilot program is an attempt by mastercard to break into the contactless biometrics market which is expected to be worth about 18 billion us dollars by 2026 hey we're mastercard we don't care about money i'm so vulgar the scheme has raised concerns over customer privacy and how the data is collected and stored. Mastercard is rolling out a controversial program that will allow shoppers, that's what you are, you're a shopper, to pay at the till with a mere smile or wave of the hand as it tries to secure a slice of the $18 billion biometrics market. While face recognition technology has long raised eyebrows, when you raise your eyebrows, it's another 50 pence. Oh, sorry, keep them still. Long raised eyebrows among civil rights groups. The payments giant said it was pushing ahead with the biometric checkout program. It claimed would speed up payments, cut queues, and provide more security than a standard credit or debit card. How much convenience do you want? Is they gonna get to a point where you go, we've always had the most convenient thing is just to take you straight out of your mother and fling you into a grave. There you go, we've saved you a great deal of trouble there. Once enrolled, there's no need to slow down the checkout queue, searching through their pockets or bag, Mastercard said. Where's this going exactly? How far down this rat run are you willing to go before you start looking at possible alternatives? You know, it's like a chip in your wrist, it's your face, you're paying for stuff with your face. Like, in the mad pursuit of what? Convenience. Like, at some point, I'm starting to think, I might be better off just in the woods with a tent and a stick. <laughs> like, so this is the wrong direction. Mastercard also claimed that the new payment system would be more hygienic, tapping into health concerns that came to the fore in the COVID pandemic. Oh, health concerns, we're free from touch. What kind of world are we being marched towards? Where human contact is regarded primarily as dangerous, where convenience is the main thing that we pursue. You know, we're told that we live at a time that is sort of beyond ideologies, this sort of late ideological state where we're beyond religion. And in a sense, we kind of are because the ideals that are actually in practice are things that sort of don't inspire any purpose in you as an individual or as a collective. Convenience. And we worship you, O oh God of convenience. We've been turned into the external nodes of a system of technocracy that sees us primarily as data. Did you see the story we did about the CDC tracking people? Are you aware that this power, once introduced commercially for your convenience, for your convenience, means that now you can be tracked by the CDC, your face can be recognised, protest laws are being introduced that prevent you from protesting, and law Lockdown laws are being introduced that prevent you from leaving your house. I mean, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist about this, but don't you see how this could create an inescapable net of power that closes in on you from every direction? So if ever you found yourself maybe not agreeing with the government, not agreeing with corporate power, not agreeing with the media, that you could just be shut down and switched off in an instant, nowhere to go, entirely enshrined in technology and convenience. The first pilots will launch in Brazil at five St. Marche supermarkets in Sao Paulo this week, with shoppers able to register for biometric payments in store or via an app with their local partner, Payface. Hello, it's me, Payface. What do I need to pay for today? The sins of the past, inexcusable negligence to stay awake as you are marched towards tyranny. That'll be a hundred pounds. Thank you, come again. <laughs> A spokesperson for Mastercard said a UK rollout was part of its near-term plan. Oh good, I live in that. And that the company was having encouraging conversations with potential partners. In the meantime, it will focus on launching the technology in markets including Latin America, the Middle East, Africa and Asia. So if you live in one of those continents or one of those countries, it's nice to know, isn't it, that you're being guinea pigs for a potential Western dystopia. The scheme is part of MasterCard's efforts to dominate the world, to enter the contactless biometrics technology market, which is expected to be worth 18.6 billion. Yeah, I know, I know, I've been told this is going to be worth 18. Why must I care about 18.6 billion? I'm not going to get any of it, am I?
No. By 2026, according to data by KBV Research, the payments giant is competing with big tech rivals such as Amazon. Amazon. Which has used palm readers at its stores, which has attracted criticism from US politicians due to data privacy concerns. Palm readers? Oh, you've got a long lifeline, but I'm afraid that life's going to be spent in tyranny. Oh, you're going to have a long relationship. I don't want a long relationship. You're fucking having one! Ow! MasterCard pointed to research suggesting that 74% of global consumers, because you're consumers on a globe, had a positive attitude towards biometric technology. Yeah, because we've been trained to. Though activists have long raised concerns over data storage and tracking. Legitimate concerns, because those things are actually happening. Activists like Edward Snowden, who's in Russia, or Julian Assange, who's in hell. Although they could also have just have been paying for a sandwich. <laughs> Thank you for my sandwich. Is that a positive attitude? No, no it isn't. Susie Miles, a partner at law firm Ashford, MasterCard themselves have recognised the data and security concerns that come with the use of biometrics. A password can be changed. Your smile and wave cannot. If biometric data is hacked, then the risk of fraudulent activity could be considerably higher than current payment methods. Oh, it's worse. It's not more convenient, it's less convenient. So is there another reason? Well, we've heard about the $18.6 billion, but could capitalism are be aligning with centralised state power to bring about situations where individual power is further diminished and reduced. Have you seen any examples of that over the last few years? Oh, that's on a postcard. If you agree, just smile and wave. Oh. There are also debates about how the data could be used to track, screen or monitor unsuspecting consumers. Of course that you can be tracked and monitored. The whole of this pandemic has been defined to some degree by stories of people being tracked, stories of data being hacked, concerns about how this new regulatory power will be used and potentially misused. All the while we're continually distracted by cultural issues that while important to a degree will be irrelevant if we don't bind together and, and develop some sort of popular power. While it seems MasterCard have taken steps to protect and encrypt this data, as biometric payments become more commonplace, the use of such data is likely to evolve and it will inevitably become harder to protect individuals' rights to privacy, Miles said. So it's actually going to make things worse. It's another example of how the coronavirus pandemic has been used to introduce powers and financial opportunities for already powerful institutions, corporations, states, all the while, we're told, oh, this is for your health, it's for your benefit, it's for your convenience. Well, maybe you and I should take some time and in the comments discuss what we prioritise in this life. What is important to you? What world do you want to live in? How do you want to exist? Is convenience what you prioritise above all else? And are you happy with granting that much power and authority over your life, your precious, precious life, to these in my opinion, potentially nefarious enterprises. I'm not suggesting the individuals are nefarious. I'm saying there's this kind of systemic wickedness that comes about as a result of limitless gain. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Commenting really helps us as well. It helps us to grow our channel and to grow what we do. 60% of you now subscribe, but I'd love all of you to subscribe if possible. Turn on the notification bell if you can. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at one of these ones. They're both fantastic videos that will really make you laugh. And if you have time, please sign up for my mailing list so I can tell you about unique events online. I do like Zoom calls where hundreds of people, just a few hundred people come on and we chat. It's fantastic fun. More important than any of that, please stay free.